subscribe, hit that notification button, and don't forget to share this video. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome back uh, to my live Q&A. My name is Dwayne Kimball, owner and founder of KMD89 uh, VA Claims Consulting, United States Army veteran and retired VA rating specialist. First, let me thank everyone for joining me this evening for my monthly uh, Q&A session. Make sure, want to make sure I got audio. So if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up, I want to make sure I checked it twice. My internet was kind of wacky earlier today and kind of freezing so i want to make sure uh that everybody uh can hear me um and also i see a couple of people have left some um super stickers um for donations i, I definitely i really really uh, appreciate that so thank you thank you thank you um i wanted to thank you terry i appreciate it uh and keep appreciate it so i want to go over some uh a couple of things before I got into the Q and A. Okay, um, and a lot of people have been asking me questions about the book, been asking me questions about uh, the tour, the event. So I wanted to uh, take uh, just a couple of moments uh, to talk about that. I thought I had I had something on here. Okay, here we go. So I just want to take a, a couple of minutes uh, to go over that for with everyone. Okay, so what I'm doing with the team and I, we decided to do is do, we have a virtual event, um, how to win your VA compensation claim. And I put a link um, in the comment section. So if you scroll back up, you'll see it. And I periodically, I'll put it uh, in the uh, comment section so you can sign up. During that, um, during that time, during that presentation, I'm going to be talking about the five ways of service connection. It's going to be live. It's not going to be an ebook. Uh, so we'll be on Zoom and you can see me. You can actually ask me uh, questions that go through it. So it'll be from July 24th through the 27th, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're only going to do one hour over four nights. OK, uh, the last night I want to leave an ample enough time so people can ask questions because the other nights is only going to be an hour. OK, so we're going to be covering a lot of information. We're going to be talking about doing a deep dive into the the five ways of service connection. I'm going to go over uh, the diagnostic code criteria. I know you probably uh, heard me talk about this in some of my videos. I'm going to show you what's included in a nexus statement, an example of an actual nexus statement to include the medical opinion and the, um, the rationale, how you can work your claim. I may even throw a quick quiz in there. Okay. I used to do this maybe, I want to say about three years ago, three and a half years ago. I used to do this presentation all the time. And then I stopped doing it. And I was like, okay, let me bring it back because I'm getting a lot of comments on YouTube. And a lot of veterans are still confused. I'm going to be talking about individual unemployability, uh, the PACT Act, presumptives, a lot of stuff. Okay. It's going to be a lot of good information that I think will benefit you to help you win your claim. Okay. So if you follow me on YouTube, Eventbrite, LinkedIn, whatever you want to be in this uh, presentation. And also I'm going to have a section on BDD claims, benefit delivery discharge claims for my active duty service members. Okay. I wish I had someone telling me about this information back when I was getting out of the military. Okay. So now we got that out the way. All right. Um, so if you're 90% trying to get to 100%, you want to attend this event. If you're frustrated on the VA claims process, you want to attend this event, okay? Even active duty service members, like I said, you, you know, even if you are two years or a year out, okay, you want to attend this event so you can get your paperwork squared away, all right? Okay, now another thing that, I just want to briefly talk about, and I won't take too much time on it, is let you know what I do, what I actually do. And I'm going to do another video, uh, maybe like eight minutes, going over my website and things that I actually do. I'm going to start with things I don't do. I don't represent the veterans before the VA. 
I don't do that. Okay. So during my time as a rating specialist, I adjudicated hundreds of claims. And I'm like, man, you know, the veterans, they don't really need that representation. They need to be educated on the process. So I created six different educational services. Okay. They're on my website. I'm going to do a separate video. One of them is a customized educational packet. We customize a packet to what you're doing with your claim. Okay. Also, we do private Q&A sessions. A lot of times veterans say, hey, I'm about to do a high level review. Okay. And I'm nervous and I don't know. I got denied, but I don't know why. I don't know what the points I need to be talking about on the high level review. So during that private Q&A session, that's an example, just one example of ones I've done in the past. We talk about it. We talk about, okay, do you even meet the criteria for a high level review? Okay, what are the chances of winning? Are there any errors? What error did the VA uh, make? Can you identify them? Can you identify the regulations that they violated? Okay, we also review veterans, DBQs, and nexus statements. So if you go to a private doctor and you just want a second set of eyes on that DBQ and nexus statement before you submit it, we review those as well. If you have your medical records from active duty and you don't know what to look for, we go through and we review your records and we give you a report and go over that report with you. Now, as I stated before, I am a retired VA rating specialist. My staff, they are retired VA rating specialists. We know what makes a DBQ sufficient for rating purposes. Okay. We know how to go and do the research in the 38 CFR. We know how to go and do the research in the M21. We know how to speak the VA claim language. So if this is something that you're interested in, if you're tired of being frustrated and you want to get educated, then go to my website, www.kmd89.com and book your free 15 minute consultation. Now, again, I'm going to do a separate video where I'm going to go through my website and get a little bit more detail in the services. But I thought about, I was like, man, I haven't even spoke about the services the last two and a half years I've been doing the live Q and A. So again, we're all retired VA rating, VA rating specialists on my team. We have a lot of information. We adjudicated our own claims. We help educate a lot of our, of our clients and they were able to maximize their benefits. Okay. So again, periodically during it, um, during this evening, I will be putting the link up to the, uh, the virtual event. And also do not forget, um, my monthly round table this month. It's always the third Thursday of every month. So it's going to be next Thursday, June 15th. You can sign up. If you follow me on Eventbrite, then uh, you can go ahead and sign up for that as well. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now, old soldier, I'm not going to pull up all three. I'm going to put up this last question because I was looking at it. Uh, you say, watched everything you have on getting a claims file. Effective dates, high level review, not missing anything I can see. Um, old soldier, he was actually talking about IU. And one thing to remember, I have a couple of videos on IU. IU is, is really tricky. Okay. I, I've rated some of these claims for I, veterans claims for IU back when I was a rating specialist. And it could go so many different ways. You know, you got to look at, not only what are you, your service connected conditions you're claiming prevent you from gainful employment, but what is the scheduler criteria? IU is not a standalone claim. It's a claim for increase for those conditions that you're saying prevent you from gainful employment. Now, you also have to think about that percentage that's been assigned to those conditions that you state that prevent you from gainful employment. Have they been in effect less than five years? Have they been in effect more than five years? Because if they've been in effect less than five years, you go to that exam, which is an exam for increase, and that condition shows improvement, and that doctor says you can do sedentary employment, what the VA is going to do, they're going to deny your IU, and then they're going to propose to reduce that particular condition. So that's why I say IU is tricky. I have a couple of videos on my YouTube channel. Go out there, watch them. I give a little bit more detailed information as it pertains to IU, okay? 
John King, service connected 70% for PTSD. Had CMP exam three weeks ago for TDIU. Again, John, that's a claim for increase. So what you're saying is I don't warrant 70% anymore for PTSD. I should be at the 100% criteria. Now, in this instance, I've actually denied IU and granted an increase from 70 to 100% for uh, some veterans. I've also denied IU and confirmed to continue the 70%. So there's so many scenarios I could tell you when it comes to IU, okay? Have two more CMP exams on the 29th of this month. Will all decisions be made together since all are on the same claim? Or will TDIU be made first? It should be all done at the same, okay? Uh, John, I never rated a case where um, I, you know, I did TIU uh, by itself and then rated everything else, okay? Not saying that it couldn't happen. I, I just never seen it, okay? But it should be um, all, all together, okay? All right, so we got 84 people. Let's make sure we get those likes up. Hey, Chris, how we doing? Uh, yeah, you're down there in San Antonio. Um, I still may be coming to Houston. Uh, actually, a friend of mine, he's like, hey, man, are you uh, are you coming to Houston for the uh, convention? I was like, so I got I reserved my room, I paid for my registration. I still got to book the flight. But I'll let you know, uh, Chris, I'm still, uh, when that book comes out, um, I will get in the mail to you. And also, for those of you that don't know, I've written a book. Okay, I've written a book. Um, it took me some, it took me some time, uh, but I finally got it. I just got the uh, the final draft from the editor like five minutes before I jumped on here, and there's a couple of things that needs to be tweaked. But it will be on Amazon July 4th. Okay, uh, we will release uh, a presale, uh, preferably probably uh, middle or late next week or the week after. Okay, but at least uh, in the next week, week and a half. But the book will be released July 4th. So uh, when we get the pre-sale set up on app, uh, pre-sale set up, you can go out there, uh, purchase the book, but it will not be sent out until uh, July 4th. I think a lot of you will find this book very, very helpful. Okay. All right. So definitely like to see your support. Uh uh, VA sent an ACE exam and the doctor gives an unfavorable opinion. Is it possible to get a uh, second opinion? Yeah, you know, with anything, Chris, when anything, when you get denied, they give you options. You still got supplemental. Uh, so if they don't give you the increase, I've seen, I was talking to a vet earlier today and they said, well, I met zero for this condition. Going for increase, right? If the doctor says, hey, it didn't get worse. There's nothing in the state that you can't turn around the next day and file another increase. I've seen veterans file three or four increases because the doctor flat out lied on the form and wasn't checking the correct boxes, you know. So, um, but you have to know what the criteria is uh, for that increase. In ACE exams, I don't like them because depending on the condition, a lot of these third-party examiners think that <laughs> every veteran gets their treatment from the VA, and that's just, that's not true, okay? Okay, here we go. Hook Ram, is it weird for the VA to deny service connection for sleep apnea, but then say it's connected to Gulf War hazardous exposure? What I'm thinking you're talking about, Hook Ram, what, what they're doing is, when they deny it, you probably see something in the rating decision that says terror. Can't think off the top of my head. That's with the um the actual uh it's an acronym for something. But Terra is something new, it falls under PAC Act, bird pits, whatever. But guess what? They don't have it in their 38 CFR, they don't have it in the M21 references like it's G14 classified. So a lot of our clients that are getting denied for conditions, they're actually they have to put that verbiage in um they have to put that verbiage in the rating decision. Okay. Uh, so no, it's, it, it's not weird because they look at that, you know, as a respiratory condition, which they have respiratory conditions under the PACT Act. Okay. So by law, they have to, they have to, well, I won't say by law, but that's a requirement that they're putting in the rating decisions down. Big time having a medical records review 
only can I request a CMP exam instead. Haven't even I'm not understanding that big time. Um if you file a claim and you meet the criteria that that is needed to get a CMP exam, then they should be requesting it. I don't understand when you say medical records review. Um the VA does that, but they do it to see if you warrant um if they have to request a CMP exam if you're claiming it on a direct service connection. Okay, Peter, how we doing? Hey, thanks for the donation, Peter. I definitely, I, I really, really appreciate it. I think I left you uh, a message, uh, a comment, uh, thanking you earlier. So definitely, uh, thanks for that, Peter. And I don't think I've ever seen you in here, Peter. If so, I do apologize, but uh, welcome if this is your first time. All right, Don West, is early onset peripheral neuropathy the only claim condition associated with Parkinsonism? Don, I cannot tell you that. I am not a medical provider. I would have to Google it, okay? Uh, so if you are getting treatment for that uh, from your primary care, whether it be under the VA or third-party examiner, reach out to them because they're the medical professionals. I'm, I'm not a medical professional. I would have to Google it, Google it myself. Read that there are others. And there could be. There, there could be others, but I can't, I can't tell you what they are uh, just because I'm not a medical professional. And I'm pretty sure some medical professionals would have to, you know, they may know some common ones, but they may have to go and do additional research. Okay. Peter, hello. Uh, first, uh, thanks for all the great videos. Uh, you're definitely welcome, Peter. Just had a CMP exam for bipolar. The examiner doctor told me that they were going to recommend that they rate me 100%. Is that a lot for a rating or what? Well, I think the examiner misspoke. Because they don't recommend anything. They check boxes. So if that box, total and social impairment, along with the symptoms, those certain boxes are checked. When it gets back to the um, the regional office, the rating specialist will go in the system. They'll check if it's total and social. They'll check that box along with the system. And then the system will tell them uh, if you should stay uh, oh, you didn't show, you didn't stay if you were already service connected. So it will determine if you are 100% or percentage lower than that. Okay. But uh, no, Peter, it's not a lot. Okay. I've, you know, some clients have said, hey, I went to my CMP exam. I had an awesome CMP examiner. And man, they were a vet and we got to talking about this and they fish, I fish. And they were, man, they were telling me, yeah, they're going to make sure I get what I deserve. And guess what happens? They get denied because that same examiner gave a negative opinion and said no. Okay. So veterans like that, they, they butter them up and they give them a smackdown. And that smackdown is a negative opinion. Annette, hello, Dwayne. Thanks for all the great information. Appreciate it. Uh, Annette has been uh, a, a long uh, supporter of mine. She's always in the round tables, uh, other training events that I've done. So Annette, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Let's connect. Um, because I want to get a uh, free copy of my book out to you uh, as well, okay? And thanks for the super sticker. I definitely appreciate it. Okay, I'm just looking at some more questions. Uh, Terry, what's going on, Terry? Um, Terry is another um, a, a long supporter of mine, and we've actually had lunch a couple of times. So Terry has actually met me uh, in person um, uh, you know, I met his wife and in the last, uh, luncheon day we had, uh, he got to meet my wife as well. So, uh, Terry, again, thanks for all the support, uh, to the channel. Uh, and I know we'll connect again before you leave the area. All right. And I'm going to give, uh, Terry, I'm going to give you a book as well. We're going to sign it. We're going to take a picture and we're going to post those pictures on Facebook so other veterans can see it. Okay. All right. Gabriel, hey, how we doing, sir? Thank you for the valuable information. And thank you, Gabriel, for all the uh, comments that you leave and the, um, the support to the channel. Uh, one thing I like to do, you know, when I get up every morning before I get into the emails, I go to the, my YouTube comments and try to answer some of the uh, comments there. And for those of you that answer me back, hey, I really appreciate that. For those of you that answer me back with another question and another question, I don't reply to those, okay? Because if I did, I have so many comments 
I wouldn't be able to, you know, first two hours, two or three hours, I could just be going back and forth um, answering questions, you know. So I try to answer a quick question, always let people know, hey, I'm actually responding. It's, you know, it's not self-generated text. I'm actually responding to those, okay? All right, greetings, Fred. All right, so you got that um, red and white hat on. Should be a blue and white hat, right? <laughs> All right, Fred, go, Ma. Uh, LG, will you be in Houston uh, next month? Uh, I got, I got them booked, but I don't have them booked my uh, my ticket. Josh, been following the channel for the last eighteen months. Thank you for, uh, thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you all that you do. Thank you for all you do. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I just butchered that. But, hey, Josh, uh, you're totally welcome. Uh, got more videos uh, that I'm going to be coming out with, post videos uh, weekly. So, definitely, I'm trying to always make sure I give um, some good content uh, out there to share. Chris Hillard, appreciate all you do. Thank you. Thank you for the support. Hello, new sub from yesterday. What's going on, George? Okay, hey, welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome, George. Says, uh, just uh, subscribed yesterday. Uh, George, I got a lot of videos out there, 200, I think 50, over 250, including the live streams. A lot of good information. Uh, we do the monthly Q&A sessions like here. We got the roundtable coming up. Also, George, don't forget about the virtual event next month. I'm going to go ahead and... Um, Put the URL in the comments section. Uh, make sure you sign up um, for that. Also, George, again, I don't know if you heard me coming out with the book. Uh, sales will open July the 4th, okay? Miss Dorsett, hi, Dwayne. So I've been rated 70% for PTSD and was just given 10% for tonight's high rate. I didn't get an increase in my rating, so I didn't go to 80%. Why is that? Good question. VA math, two plus two does not equal four. It equals three. Actually, Ms. Dorsett, I did a video on how to calculate your VA compensation using the VA's rate table. Okay. Now, I must forewarn you, when you watch that video, it's definitely going to be um, confusing. Okay. But it's not, oh, I'm at 70. I got a 10%, so I should be at 80. That's not the way... Uh, the VA math uh, works. Sugar, hello, hey, how we doing? Andrew, oh, why the sad eye, Andrew? I think I'm looking at, I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> Karen Cooper, Karen Cooper, hello, hey, how we doing, Karen? Josh, yes, BDD, been looking for more info on BDD claims, haven't found much on the internet. Josh, you haven't went to my channel, YouTube channel, and searched for BDD, I did a video on it a couple of years ago, okay? But also, Josh, if you're still on active duty, I'm going to be talking about BDD claims in my virtual event um, next month. What's going on there? It's that time. Did you get my information? Um, it's that time. I, I just been totally swamped. Uh, I'm about a week behind on my voicemail. So if you call me, leave a voicemail. I'm like a week behind because I'm booked up with free consultations till the middle of next month. So I'm trying to, you know, return calls, make sure um, I'm doing my free consultations for people come on and they ask, you know, we're talking about the different educational services uh, that I provide. So, hey, I didn't get back with you, Chris, but I did send you an email, uh, just been swamped. So we can go ahead and get you set up uh, with that Q&A. Stanley, if I have IU and then my schedule rating goes to 100, I heard, ooh, ooh, Stanley, no, you didn't. Stanley, did you just type that? I heard. You can't just hear, Stan. You got to know, okay? But going forward, I heard that I don't lose SMC about 400 a month. But what if I begin working? Do I lose the SMC if I'm deemed employable? Stanley, good question. I'm going to answer your question, but get the facts, Dan. Never say I heard because you got it. No. So the way it works, Dan, and I've actually done, when I rate it, I've actually done this before. The veteran has IU. The overall 
percentage is 90 percent the vet comes in does some increases or or gets service connected for some new conditions the vet goes from 90 to 100 the 100 percent permanent total the overall combined rating if it's 100 percent your permanent total is a greater benefit over the iu because no longer at that point you fall under the iu requirements so at that point the IU is basically voided, right? Because 100% permanent total is a greater benefit and you can go back to work. IU, you can still work. You just can't make above the poverty level, okay? And I don't, I can't think of the M21 reference. I would have to go through and look at several of those as it pertains to the IU and 100% being a greater benefit. I know when I was a rated, they gave some training on that, but I can't remember if we talked about it in M21 or 38 CFR. Chris, how we doing? How come no one talks about how they can come? Let me back up. How come no one talks about how they can come take separation money from you 28 years later when you disable and recoup 100% of your disability for months? Chris, I can't say why nobody else talks about it. But I will tell you this. I haven't talked about it. Uh, and I can't tell you why I haven't talked about it on YouTube. But I will say this, Chris. I don't think it's fair. And I'm thinking this is what you're talking about. You took separation pay or severance pay or separation pay when you got out. When that happens, when you come over to the VA and you file a claim, they're going to recoup that money. Okay. Now, even when I worked at the VA, no one gave a, a, a solid answer as to why that's done. Okay. So I can't provide it to you. I just know that they do it. Now, my question to you, Chris, is when you separated and you took that money, when they gave you that briefing, did they tell you, hey, yeah, we're giving you separation pay of $40,000, but if you go file a claim with the VA, they will recoup it. Okay. Uh, so I will always want to ask somebody that. So let me know, Chris. Andy, Andy Lopez, United States Marine Corps, Austin, Texas. What's going on, Andy? Thank you for all your very valuable information. I've learned a whole lot. Thanks to you, sir. You are most certainly welcome. I uh, see you in San Antonio for your seminar, um, bringing another Marine with me. Okay. Um, Reach out to me, Andy, because I want to talk to you about that uh, event, okay? Uncle G, um, Mr. O said, please look at that. Okay, all right. We'll show you how the VA calculate. There you go. So, yes, that's actually the, uh, Uncle G, the um, the table. The, um, I'm not going to say the compensation rate table. It's the um, computation table, okay? That's what I show, Ms. Dorsett, that's what I show in that video from that 38 CFR. If service connected 30, at 30% for something in 2016, then uh, service connect increased to 50 in 2021, does the protected time start all over? Uh, yes. Okay. So it's something to always uh, remember. Now, I will say this, Chris. The VA constantly they change sometimes change the requirements of regulations okay so last time i checked the answer would be yes okay but if you're doing that especially with other conditions you always want to confirm i would normally go out to the m21 and just type in protection or protection rule or something like that and start my research there or i don't think it might be on effective dates okay i'm gonna go for vet exposure and on the burn pit registry, the VA denied me service connection for sleep apnea, but also wrote it's connected to Gulf War hazard exposure. I'm confused. I, I would have to see that um, that rating decision, exactly what they said, because the verbiage can be tricky. Um, hmm. But another question, Hook Graham, did you get a C&P exam? If you did, do you have a copy of that C&P exam? Okay, that's the question. Yeah, Chris, I'll definitely, I'll, I'll let you know uh, when I come out that way. Hey, what's going on, uh, Sean? Congrats, go mod. What's up, frat? Uh, you're going to be in Houston next month? 
Okay, yeah, right. Yeah, there you go, George. Yeah, tell them, hey, hit that thumbs up. Somebody let me know uh, how many um, – I mean, we got 129 people. Let me know how many uh, thumbs up we got, okay? Jeff, I was prescribed a CPAP machine in October and was told by my VA doctor to apply for higher benefits. I did and was denied. Okay. Uh, they also prescribed me anxiety, depression medication. Can I still get approved? No. Yes and no, uh, Jeff. I did a video on my channel. You know, for a lot of you, I'm recognizing, I'm not recognizing a lot of names, so I'm assuming that you're new uh, to my live Q&A. And even people that follow me, go to my YouTube channel. Click on the link at the top for videos, and it'll show you all the 250-some videos. But then to the right, you can click on a little hourglass and search for videos, okay? I did a video on this topic, Jeff, and I can't even remember what I called it. Can you, if you're diagnosed at VHA, is can you be approved at VBA? Something like that, okay? Just because you were diagnosed at VHA, Veterans Healthcare Administration, does not mean you're automatically going to get service connected and approved for that condition on the VBA side, Veterans Benefit Administration. The doctors need to stick to doctoring. They don't rate the claim. He gave you some bad information, Jeff. Okay, now, it possibly could you possibly could get service connected if it falls under the five ways of service connection. I have several videos on my YouTube channel talking about the five ways of service connection. And guess what, Jeff? Next month, during my virtual event, guess what I'm going to be talking about? The five ways of service connection. So when you understand that, then you know, you know what? I don't qualify for that. All right? All right, Donna says, looking forward to that book. So, Donna, you're gonna go out there, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna grab it, read it. And if you buy the book, leave me some comments, or I may just do uh not a round table, but I just may do an event maybe two weeks after, invite a few people. If you you know purchase the book, you read it, and if you got some questions about it, then you have me live instead of me reading your comments, and you can ask me um, you know, some questions about the book and no, let me you know. Let me think what you let me know what you think about the book. All right, Stephen. Um, I have had my mental mental health rating seventy percent since two thousand sixteen. My code sheet states my condition is static. Man, I love that VA claim language. Code sheet static. I'm ninety percent rated altogether. Will the VA automatically provide PNT, or do I have to request it? Well. Requesting PNT by itself is not an actual claim. So let's just say you come in for new conditions, you get service connected for those conditions, and it takes you to that 95% threshold, then they'll grant the 100%. If they feel that the condition is static and you don't, they don't think it's going to improve and they don't assign a um, routine future, then they'll go ahead and grant the PNT. Active duty here, my 180 day mark is. This month, which month, Josh? When I when I will submit BDD. I have scanned my entire SDR as well as private medical records. Is it best to update SDRs myself or have VA pull SDRs? Good question, Josh. Again, in that video that I talked about, I show the BDD criteria. You have to submit your medical records with that claim. Also, I have a video, Josh, on my channel where I show you how you can go to the VA's website and upload it yourself. We have several clients um, that uh, we reviewed their medical records and we provided a report for them so they know, okay, these are things that I can claim, all right? And also, Josh, I'm actually, I don't know where you're stationed, but I'm actually working on some federal contracts to get on, um, on base or post and do get connected with TAPS to do a small presentation for active duty service members. What's exactly the process to apply for TDIU if you're 90%? It's the same, Kenneth, if you were 
or 80 percent okay um go out to my youtube channel search for my iu videos and i, I really i break it down okay but there is a form that you have to fill out for iu all right and i think in the second video i show that form part of it anyway and i talk about it yeah thanks chris i i had a, a brain cramp but the one thing that i wanted to you know talk about Tara. Thanks, Chris, again. I know last week I went out to the V's website, especially M21, did a search for it, didn't see it. But I'm seeing it in rating decisions. So as soon as they update the regulations, I will do a video on it, okay? So veterans understand it. So I don't understand why they're even talking about it in the rating decision, but I mean, I know about it. Chris, I, I I know who with you know what they're talking about, but I don't want to do a video just yet because I just don't want to be talking about it. I want to show what the VA has on their website as it pertains to this, educate the veterans. But thank you, Chris, um, for looking that up. One, I rated for eczema at 30%. I've been getting um, uh, I can't pronounce that shots twice a month, along with other corticosteroids and my skin is looking better because of it. How would I go about doing an increase to 60? First thing one, and we tell our clients this, and you know, uh, when I'm doing consultations as well, is when you look at that rating decision, what is the criteria? And it, this is for anybody. When you go in for an increase, before you go in for that increase, what is the criteria for the next higher percentage? And do you meet the criteria? If you do, what evidence do you have to show that you meet the criteria? I cannot tell you how many vets, they don't do that. I even tell vets, hey, they'll say, Dwayne, how do I get a copy of my claims file? What about this? In all of my YouTube videos, in the description section, when you click that show more button, I have a lot of information in there. How to get a copy of your claims file. How to get a copy of your disability breakdown letter. One, because when you call the VA at 800-827-1000, say it again, 800-827-1000, a letter that you want to ask them for is a disability breakdown letter to include the diagnostic codes. It's a four-digit number for skin, for eczema. I don't know the the all four digits, but it starts with a seven, okay, because that's under the skin. Now, when you get that, it's going to be a four-digit code. You go to the VA's website, the rating scheduler, look under the skin, uh, diagnostic code criteria, find that four-digit number. It'll tell you why they gave you the 30%, and it'll tell you what you need for the 60%. Guess where else you can find it? In the rating decision that they send you, Okay. Frat, I'm currently uh R R A L G. You didn't tell me if you're coming to um uh, uh if you're coming to Houston uh next month for Conclave. But anyway, Frat, I'm currently 50% for bilateral flat feet. I think that's the highest for that, Chris. And diagnosed with oh, I can't pronounce that. 15 on S1. Okay, so for your back, uh with radiculopathy. Can I claim shin splints, lower back, ankles, and knees secondary to my flat feet? Yes, you can. LG. But again, it still has to go through the process. You claim it's secondary, right? So it still has to go through the process of you filing a claim and going to a CMP exam, and the doctor has to provide a medical opinion. Okay. Christopher. Okay, Christopher, I see you're a Dallas Cowboy fans. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers. I recently filed claims for migraine secondary to head scar that I'm already rated for. Your videos on migraines helped me write a detailed statement in support of my claim. Just want to say thanks. Okay, hey, I, I, it, no problem, Chris, you're welcome. You know, if uh, when you hear back, you know, you come back on a live Q&A, let me know how it turns out uh, for you. Like to, you know, um, hear if um, you, you won your claim. So I'm, I'm hoping that you do. Okay, Joseph Everett, what's going on? Just from the icon, I already know what I need to tell Joseph, okay? While we hate, while we wait, we hydrate. <laughs> okay, we had a long conversation 
he knows what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, Eric Johnson, what criteria does the VA goes by to grant PNT? Uh, when your overall evaluation is 95% or higher, okay, and all of your conditions are static, okay? And, Eric, if you go to the VA's website, you can find, well, M21. And the M21 is not a regulation, it's a reference, but I like going there because it's easier to search. And when I find stuff what I'm looking for, guess what, Eric? It'll take me back to the regulation. So if you go there and you put in permanent and total PNT, you'll find a lot of information on it and they'll have like some of the criteria. Now, I, you know, the criteria is kind of weird because I looked at it and I was like, oh, wait a minute, that's a lot. And I've seen veterans rate it less and still be at 100% permanent total, but it'll give you a little bit more detailed information, okay? Hey, thank you. Uh, it's that time. I definitely appreciate it. Hey, Dwayne, not clear on the last email. Uh, can we speak? Yeah. Um, you know, it's that time. I've been on the phone uh, this morning since about 8, eight o'clock. Um, I just got off maybe about 15 minutes before uh, I hopped on here, and I still got some calls to make to some individuals out uh, on the West Coast. So uh, the best thing, Chris, I mean, it's that time. You know, I, I try to get detailed, but, you know, I'll try to squeeze some time in for you uh things my time is getting real tight right about now especially um with the book you know that's been uh i spent five hours saturday morning just going back and forth with the publisher emails and i probably read my read my book at least 20 times by now okay um so i'm definitely knee deep in that right now but i'll try to definitely uh you know carve out just a couple of minutes for you chris hey, and thanks for the uh super sticker as well appreciate it uh, curious if you think lumbar radiculopathy and sciatic are filed separately. Uh, you know, Christopher, I the best way I'm gonna I'm gonna if you go back to my channel, I have a video. It's called um, what is the name of this video? Secondary conditions you can claim and you don't need a nexus. And I'm actually talking about that question and. In that video, what I'm talking about, if you're service-connected for your back, right, and you're going for an increase, you have a diagnosis of radiculopathy, and the doctor checks on that box that you have a diagnosis of radiculopathy and fills out the radiculopathy section that's actually on the back exam, you don't need a nexus or medical opinion. They have to grant it automatically. Okay, but in that video, I get a little bit more detail. Okay, Christopher, good question. Good question. Ace Johnson, 90% three claims filed in January 2023, increase from 70% increase denied. Sign your site is granted 50%. Tonight is deferred. File intent a month ago and waiting VA decision. Okay, uh, Ace Johnson, let us know how it turns out for you. Sicko Blue, thanks for all that you do and for the great information. Hey, I definitely appreciate it. And, you know, um, I, you know, I have a passion for this. You know, I want to make sure veterans get what they deserve and not have to go through what I went through. Um, you know, I've done some videos in the past where I talk about my experience with my VA claim and what I went through. And veterans, you think you have a hard time? getting service connected for stuff, VA employees have it worse. Trust me, okay? Um, I kept getting denied by another raider in another state. And I'm like, wait a minute, we got the same training. I'm giving you the information that you need because I'm rating and granting benefits off of lesser information from other vets. So that was a fight, you know, but I didn't give up. I stayed in the fight. I actually enjoyed it. Kind of pissed me off from time to time. But I wanted to let them know I wouldn't give it up, and I didn't, okay? Thanks for all that you do. Great information, Fred. Okay, uh, Cinco Blue. You, are you going to Houston? Will you be in Conclave next month? You know what? All my fraternity brothers on here, and I haven't heard them say, hey, I've seen you post stuff on the Facebook Blue and White groups. Uh, I'm coming to um, Houston for Conclave next month. Let me know. I'm thinking about coming i don't know i'm kind of up in the air about it i know i did some um last november 
I did some events uh, for the fraternity on the uh, national level, uh, a couple of brothers on the military affairs committee chair for, I know one uh, that's over uh, the president or chairman for the Southwestern region. Okay. Uh, but Cinco, all, all, all members, uh, if you're part of the divine nine or, you know, part of my organization, Phi Beta Sigma, but more so Sigma's why is it nationals doing more with veterans about this whole claims thing? You know, I'm curious. Because if I see the national president, the national president at a conclave, I'm definitely going to ask him. Okay. Anyway, I'm sorry. I digress. Hector uh, from Georgia. Uh, good evening, my friend. I just have a question. I'm 100% PNT. And recently, I asked for an increase of three of my conditions that was rated for the minimum. They increased my anxiety and depression from 20 to 70. Okay. And have two other conditions that were increased from 20 to 50. And third one from 10 to 20. My question would be, how do I apply for SMCS? They award for my surgery, but don't know if this will be permanent or not. The, the surgery will not be per, it will not be permanent, it'll be temporary. Now, Hector, guess what? I have a YouTube video on my channel where I talk about SMCS and the requirements. It's two separate requirements, okay? One is most common. 95% of the time, veterans awarded um, SMCS. When you have one disability, one at 100% and other disabilities totaling 60% or higher, they have to grant you SMCS. If you're housebound, you can't leave your home, they have to grant you, excuse me, they have to grant you SMCS, okay? But in that video, I break it down, okay? So definitely uh, check that out. Thanks for that question too, Hector. I'm going to put the um, link again for the virtual event um, next month in the comment section. And also, you know, we get a lot of people here, it's up to 136 people. I know I'm not going to get through all the questions. Again, I'm doing another Q&A. It's going to be live. I'm going to be on YouTube at the end of, um, no, I'm sorry, not the end of this month, but next Thursday. Okay. And that event will be free. Okay. So, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's an hour of your time. Okay. If you sign up, show up. I understand things in life, it happens, but show up. And I and I have limited seating. Okay. I just don't open it up for 100 people. I have limited seating because I want to make sure I get people's questions answered. Okay. So I kind of limit the number of people uh, that can attend. So that's why I say if you sign up, by all means, try try and show up as well. Uh, Skippy uh, Snowballs, <laughs> glad to see the channel doing well. You and I did a video together a long time ago with Ray. Oh, okay, yeah, I remember that. Ray, yeah. Uh, I wonder, you know, I um, Ray emailed me. Um, you'll see his name uh, in the book. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do remember. I think you were in Pennsylvania, if I'm not mistaken. But, yeah, I do remember that. Good afternoon, Dwayne. Hey, Brian, how we doing? Hey, give me an update. You get, give me an update. Go in the portal and give me an update, Brian. All right. A is the Emma de Casa. Okay. All right. How many CMP exams can I go to for one claim? So far, I have been to five. Wow. Uh, well, that depends. You know, if you are going for increase, then yeah, they're going to give you, you know, um, a CMP exam for that. But what I, I talked to a veteran today, which is, which is, you know, something that I've been seeing, not a lot, but I've been seeing it. Veterans are saying, Hey, I had a, um, a, a CMP exam and it's been about a month. And now they're telling me I got to go back to another one for the same one. And so this one vet would happen to him. The doctor quit. And I guess they quit before they sent, they completed the exam and sent it to the regional office and it wasn't complete. So they had to, um, the vet come back. So I don't know um, if that's happening to you or not, but I've heard that a couple of times and that's, that, that's, that's, that's weird, but yeah, that's, it, you could be falling underneath that. Or again, if you file a claim for increase and then you file another increase, you got to keep going back to those exams. Hey, George. Hey, thank you. I really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you for the support. LG, I'm looking forward to Houston. I hope to link with you and get a signed book if possible. Um, 
I might bring a few books. Um, I wasn't planning on it, but yeah, LG, I'll uh, bring a few. I book. Um, I'm staying at one of the courtyards. I can't remember which one, um, but I got to buy my uh, ticket. But I'll definitely be there. Uh, so I need to get a blazer too. So if you can hook me up with a place that it, that sells those blazers, so I don't have to try and get one there to conclave. All right, all right. Hey, hey, hey. Mr. Camille, I definitely appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And for those of you that are new, uh, and whether you're giving donations or not, what I do with these donations, the, the last two years, two and a half years, I adopted some schools in the Tampa, Florida area. I'm in the Tampa, uh, Tampa, Florida area. And when I would receive these funds and I adopted these schools, we were doing, last year we did um, Thanksgiving, we fed 50 families at the school. So we bought uh, groceries, turkeys, and other side items uh, for those families. Last summer, I uh, had a company out of Atlanta donate school supplies, book bags. So I had to pay for the freight to get it from Atlanta to here and brought it right to my house. He had 12 pallets of stuff. And we donated to ooh, a recreation center, uh, two different elementary schools, another after school nonprofit uh, photographer that took some of the pictures for me. Uh, he, him and his church uh, doing some things at a small town in a rural area in uh, Dominican Republic. So we donated some stuff there. Uh, another uh, company, another two individuals, another company that I know, they came and picked some products up and sent them all the way back home to their hometown, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, their family member was uh, doing a school uh, giveaway. I think he owned a barber shop. So they came and picked up some stuff, all that they could take and send them up there. Uh, so those are where these funds go. OK, but now I no longer have the adopted schools. So now I'm giving scholarships, five individual five hundred dollar scholarships to kids in low income areas that are going to school. So we just my team and I, we just started that the first of the year. Uh, so uh, when we start giving out scholarships, we'll be definitely um, sharing those pictures with you. But for the school giveaways and all the other stuff that we've done over the past two, two and a half years, the pictures are on our website, okay? But that's where the funds go to. Mr. Camille just hit 100 cent TNP, P and T. Hey, congrats. Thanks for all the vlogs and, and good, sir. Hey, not a problem. Thank you. Uh, but more so, Mr. Camille, thank you for not giving up. I talked to so many veterans. They said, Oh, I'm just tired. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. I'm just they, you know, VA's just beat me up. I'm like, really? Mm -mm. Can't give up, okay. George says, thinking about filing for my knees, I was a paratrooper, parachute rigger. Guess what, George? I have hmm, two videos, but one in particular. What conditions you can claim for being awarded the parachute badge? Okay? Again, people, I got a lot of videos and questions that you're asking. All you got to do is go to the you, my YouTube channel, search for that video, put in... Um, Parachute badge, George, and that should come right up. Check it out. And actually, if you Google it, there's a lot of um, articles that paratroopers have written about injuries that can be sustained while um, uh, being a paratrooper, okay? Edward, hello, Dwayne. I was 7% PNT and filed an increase. I was told, oh, Edward, no, you didn't. I was told. I got a video about this, but I'm not going to spill the beans. About I was told, they said, I heard, okay? <laughs> I was told I had to attend a CMP exam, and I denied to attend because of a current DBQ. I was granted 100% PNT, PNT housebound. Now, a lot of people don't think that that's true. Now, I will say this, and I've done a few videos that's on my YouTube channel where I'm talking about inconsistencies as it pertains to DBQs. And what I'm talking about, I'm sorry, what I'm talking about in these videos is, some VA employees are you using the veteran sufficient DBQ. You got to make sure it's sufficient, okay? I'm not going to go into detail on what makes the DBQ sufficient. And they're rating the, they're rating the claim. Other VA employees are saying, you know what? I'm not going to use that. 
I want you to go to a third party contractor so that third party contractor can say no. Now, I don't know if that's what the, the VA employee is actually thinking, but I can't think of another reason why they would schedule an exam when they know they have sufficient evidence to rate the claim. You got some VA employees doing it, and you have some that are not. It's like the luck of the draw who you get, okay? But either way, they deny it, they have options. And that's something I did too, Edward. So thanks for sharing. Mr. Uh, Mayor, paratrooper, yeah. File intent to file ASAP, get a fully developed claim started. Good luck. Yep, there it is. Man, I love when people speak that VA claim language, intent to file. Darth, it's the law. What's the law, Darth? Kevin, got my reduction letter stating that I'm going from 90 to 70. Whew, I'm still waiting on my high-level review decision. Can they reduce you without a high-level review decision? My reduction is slated to take effect August 1st. You cannot do a high-level review until the final decision. Okay. Now, my question to you, Kevin, in that notification letter, and guess what, everybody? I have a YouTube video on showing you the difference between the notification letter and the difference uh, than a rating decision. So my question to you, Kevin, in that notification letter, whenever they do a reduction, they have to give you due process. And it talks about an RVSR hearing. And guess what, people? I have a video on my YouTube channel where I'm explaining what an RVSR hearing is as it pertains to the reduction. A lot of videos out there. You know, I was looking through Funny you should mention that, Kevin. I was looking through some my claims file. You can probably see it back there, okay? That's my claims folder. And trust me, that's not a lot. When I rate it, I was, you know, claim folders was twice as big as that, okay? But on top of that, there's a book, a black binder. You probably can't see it. So, Kevin, I'm going through that binder, and guess what I saw? When I rated, it, I conducted several RVSR hearings. There was a script that we had to follow. We had to fill out a template put the veteran's name, record it, and we had to go off that script. And I still have a copy of that script from years ago, okay? But again, in a notification letter, did you reach out to the VA and say, hey, I want an RVSR hearing? That puts a pause on everything. And you got a time limit, and they tell you what the time limit is in the notification letter. A lot of veterans, we get these notification letters, you have to read that line by line. Don't skip around okay because when veterans they talk to me and i'm like wait a minute what did you see this well no see i didn't you let me know you didn't read everything not saying that you didn't kevin but check out that notification letter gavin thank you Dwayne, for sharing your time and knowledge with us uh <laughs> please hey not a problem not a problem my pleasure What's going on, Scrap Guy, formerly known as Gun Guy? Anthony Hightower, how we doing? Hello, hello, hello. Edward Lee, what are the criteria for aid and attendance for PTSD? Hmm. There's no such thing, aid and attendance for PTSD. Now, you must be talking about the requirements for SMCL. And guess what, Edward? I think we have a lot of people in here because, new people, because a lot of these questions I'm getting, I've done videos on. So I have two videos on SMCs, and one I'm talking about SMCK, SMCS, and SMCL, and what the criteria is, okay? Now, for SMCL, which is a in attendance, Edward, I don't know. I think it's like four or five different criteria. I don't have all of them memorized, and no Raider may have all of them memorized, but a Raider will know where to go and look. And so when I did the research, for that video, what did I do? I went to the VA's website, found SMCL. There's the criteria. Did a video on it, okay? So a lot of Raiders, even though I'm answering a lot of questions, that's just based off, you know, years of experience as a Raider. But there's a lot of things I know, but I don't know, meaning I don't have it memorized. I may know 38 CFR, like what is the Agent Orange presumptive list CFR, 38 CFR 3.309, 38 CFR 3.309, subpart E. What is the one-year presumptive? 38 CFR 3.309, subpart A. Okay? So I've worked around those a lot, so I have them memorized. Now, 
the conditions that's on that list, there's a lot of them. I don't have them memorized. I know where to go and find it. Okay. And so that's what I'm trying. That's what we do with our clients. We educate them. Okay. Throughout this process. So they can get their maximum benefit of whatever they feel that that is. Okay. And that's what you need to know. You got to know where to go and find this stuff. A lot of veterans, when I talk to them, they know exactly where to go and find it. You know, if not, they'll jump in. Uh, if I did, a, I did, a, I think it was last year, I did a, uh, one of my round tables where I, you know, I did a, um, a class on how to search the M21 manual reference, how to subscribe to the M21 manual reference and get updates when be no, get uh, notified of updates when the VA updates the M21 manual reference. Okay. A lot of veterans say, oh, I shouldn't have to do all that. Okay. If you don't want to put the time in, you get out what you get, what you put in. Okay. Anthony, the separation pay re, uh, recompetition is happening to me now. I was not informed that if I take the pay, I would have to pay it back if I claim a disability. And that's why I want to get it in this TAPS program where I'm doing presentations to active duty service members. So I'm trying to get connected with the individuals that have contracts to come in, whether it be Marines, Air Force, Coast Guard, Army, Navy, whatever. And these are some of the things I'm going to be talking about. If you take that separation pay and you get out and you go file that claim, the VA is going to withhold your compensation. People need to know that, okay? George says we have 62 people. We are at an hour. And I tell you what, if somebody could tell me if we had 130 thumbs up, I'll go for another 10 minutes. Okay? Someone says, okay, we're at 63. Okay. Sean says, finally got 100% PT last week. Congratulations, everybody. Show Sean some love in the comment uh, box. Beyond relieved, and I didn't go to my CMP exam. Action was sufficient DBQ. Sean, where did you hear about that? Did you hear did, it, did you hear me say it? Okay. But for those of you that doubt that, we've had two people come on here and say that tonight. So, again, those videos I'm talking about, the inconsistencies, because some of our clients are going through that. Got one client, hey, yeah, I get submitted a DBQ along with my claim on the money. Got it, um, got a, um, a rating decision on a Thursday. Come back two months later, comes back as another client, uh, uh, comes back as a client again, gets a DBQ and next statement. And it took them two months to make a decision. And it was large part because they kept saying, Come to this exam. He's like, No, 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 I'm not going. And then eventually got it. Okay. So, it can be done. Again, it's just going to depend on which VA employees that's it land on, okay? So if we got 130 people, I'll keep going. Can I apply for housebound if I'm 70% for PTSD and 100% combined? So, Hector, the way housebound work, you have to have a single disability at 100% and other disabilities totaling 60% or higher. So I'm just trying to get down here to see how many thumbs up. We got 110. Oh, George say we only got 110. Okay, I'm going to give, it's 103. I'm going to give the 105. An hour and five minutes. We don't hit 130. I'm going to shut it down for the night. Scap and go scap. Care adapter. Caught the last, uh, the last of the subject, but I got under VSI, SSB, and before I received any disability, they did take back all the money they had gave me, so it was a loan that I had to pay back. Yep, you're exactly right. You're exactly right, okay? Ms. Camille is showing love to Sean for that 100%. Eagle one, VA having medical records review by outside source after CMP. Is this normal? Been waiting for a decision since August. Wow, it shouldn't take that long, but you know, there's a lot of things, and I and I and I did a video on what are some things that could hold your VA claim up. Veterans continue to submit evidence. Veterans 
continue to say, oh, I want you to go out to this doctor. I want you to go out to this doctor and get this information. There's a lot of different reasons uh, why this claim could be taking so long. Uh, so I just can't uh, pinpoint it. But it's going, they're sending it back for a medical records review. Normally, that's like an addendum. Maybe the doctor you know, didn't complete something on the, uh, on the exam. Michael, I have a scheduled re-examination for PTSD next week. Ooh. Do I have to start all over again how I was diagnosed, or is it just a continuation? That's going to depend on the examiner, okay? But understand what is the criteria for the current percentage you have? What is the criteria for the next higher percentage? You know, one of the things that we do, we just had a sign, we just signed the vet up today, going through something similar, right? So what we're going to be talking about is the occupational, the social and occupational impairment, some of the symptoms, okay? Not from like a mental health provider standpoint, but, you know, providing some examples and some things that the vet may not be thinking about. Like, for example, you service connect for PTSD. When you go in a restaurant, do you normally sit with your back to the door so you can see the front door? You don't like being around large crowds. You have to work from home because it's a safe and protected environment. Okay, things like that. You know, do you avoid confrontation? Are you paranoid? You know, are you always on guard? Things like that. And you have to reasonably articulate that stuff as it pertains to your, uh, your job, your occupation, and your social life. Okay. And that Baker say, I will be buying a book. No, you will not, Ms. Baker. You show so much support. I am going to send you a signed copy in the mail. Uh, we'll be talking about it next Thursday, okay? So, no, you're not going to buy the book. I'm going to give you a free one, okay? All right, let me check and see how many people we got. 121, okay. 125, okay, that's close enough. Um, I'll go for another three minutes, okay, because I've already been talking. Thanks for those updates too, George. George must have been a first sergeant or something in the military. <laughs> Keeping people on point. All right. Um, thanks for the info. Can't wait till the next live. Hey, Jeff, sign up for the um the live uh the QA next Thursday. Okay. But it, again, it's limited seating, people, because I always make sure that I, you know, I answer everybody's questions. So if I had like 50 people on there, it'd be hard sometimes to get through those questions in an hour. So we normally keep it relatively small, like 12 to 15. Okay, we will uh, we'll, uh, buy the book, definitely. Yeah, I definitely appreciate the support. I think, you know, I, I don't say I think. I know you're going to enjoy it, you know. Um, I, it's something I've been working on since last November. Um, and I, I just, you know, I just felt compelled I had to do it. I had to put something together. Um, I, I, I had to do it. All right, it's that Sam say, how do I sign up for the virtual event? And is there a cost to attend? Uh, yes, there is a cost to attend. I put a lot of work and time into this virtual event. Uh, again, I'm putting the link to sign up in the comments. So scroll down, look for my picture, okay? And that link, that's where you sign up, all right? Hey, Mrs. Free, how we doing? How we doing? How we doing? Hope all is well out there in Arizona. Now, I want to also let everyone know, got a couple minutes left. When you go to the Eventbrite link, okay, I have an account there. You can click on follow, sort of like when you become a subscriber on YouTube. So every time I post an event, you get an email notification on a, from Eventbrite, okay? And you can follow me on there, all right? And so every time I put up an event, whether it be a free or paid event, you'll get a notification, okay? Stanley, I am rated IU and PNT, so I already have all the uh I, I already have the all around better benefits, but I have a pending pack that claim. Hopefully, for backdated compensation and a refund of a VA funding fee. Okay, okay, I you know there is mm, I, think I did a video where I, I talked about the different percentages and the benefits that you get for each percentage. Uh, like 10, 20, 30, 40. 
And I can't remember which percentage it was where you had to be where they would waive the funding fee. I want to say it's 30 or 40%. Alan, hi, I got all the uh I got out of the Navy in 1985. I was on board ship my whole time. The only people we saw uh our core men, unless it was that serious, where you had to go to the clinic outside of Pearl Harbor Gate. So a lot of times, if you're claiming something on a direct basis, it has to be documented in those records, okay? Rhonda Hart says, hello. Hey, how we doing, Rhonda? Just got my first 30% yesterday and waiting on more. There you go. Go Army. Beat Navy. <laughs> All right, congratulations. TK, what are the different steps of BVA? It's on the form. If you read the, the claim form for BVA, it breaks it down. Okay. Hey, Mr. Spree, thank you again uh, for the super sticker. Thank you for the support, all the support you've been in. I think you, yeah, you were in my round table last month. I know you had to uh, dip out a little bit early, but again, thank you uh, for the support. Let's connect. Uh, Got to get you a signed book as well. Okay. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and shut it down, everyone. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. But again, I will be doing a Q&A um, next Thursday live. Okay. It won't be on YouTube. You got to log into um, the Zoom event. Okay. So make sure you signed up. But let me see how many people we got signed up already. I want to see if people signed up for the round table. I know I got a few emails, like four people. Okay. We got five people signed up for the round table. OK, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy the URL for the roundtable next Thursday. But the virtual event is next month, starting on July 24th. I've already put that link, excuse me, into the um, comment section. The link that I'm sharing now, and I'll leave it up for like a minute or so. Uh, the link, so scroll down to the bottom of the comment section, click on that link, sign up. My next Q&A session is free. June 15th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we go, we're going to go for about an hour. Okay. So if you didn't get your question answered tonight, um, you'll be live with me next Thursday. Okay. Seats are going to fill up quick. I will not open it up. So make sure you have the link. I'm trying to draw it out so you can you can you can click that link. George, I noticed you, you just subscribed. Um, if you got time next Thursday, love to see you. Make sure you sign up. Hope you hopefully uh you got the link. Uh you see the link. Okay. I was just looking for one other question. Uh, no, no, no other questions. Okay. Okay, here's one I I, I want to see. Kevin, go mob and thanks, Frat Vet. Hey, not a problem. Go mob, blue five. All right, so I had to get this last question. And I'm going to call you as soon as I finish up, Mr. Hammond. We went to college together. So much information, but it's so much information, but it's great. You're right. So before I shut it down, uh, Kurt, I will <laughs> I will give you a call. Okay. You know what? You know, and Chris, man, Chris, you, you, you do your homework. Man, you do your homework. Have you heard of Agent Orange in Okinawa up to 2014? No. Um, I haven't seen anything under the Agent Orange presumptive regulation uh, as it pertains to Okinawa, okay? But you know what? Chris signed up for one of my Q&A sessions. And um, Chris, if you wouldn't, just leave a quick feedback in the comment section of what you thought about the Q&A session, session. But I can tell you, you know, Chris, he signed up, and I definitely appreciate it. And I know we've talked on the phone a few times even after that. Um, I could tell Chris was someone that wanted that knowledge, that wanted like, hey, you know, I understand this. I don't understand that, you know, and was asking a lot of questions. And I love it when veterans do that because he knew after we got off that Zoom call that day, he still had to go and do some research, you know, but he was on the right track. OK, so that's what you have to do. You got to put that time in. You got to put that time in. Okay. All right. So we'll go, go to, oh, excuse me. Um, 
man, I am seeing so much good information. Okay, waiver and VA funding fee starts at 30%. That's what I thought it was in that. So uh, definitely uh, thank you for that. All right. So uh, again, a thank you. Don't forget, July 4th, the book will be live on Amazon. We're going to be doing some promotional stuff. Make sure you go to the website, sign up for the newsletter. We're going to be sending out newsletters. I'm going to do a video when the book come and show it to you, um, a YouTube video. Also, I'll be talking about it in my Veterans Roundtables, in any of the events, upcoming events I have coming up. Uh, we're, we're, be, we're going to be sharing YouTube posts, a lot of that stuff, okay? We're going to be showing uh, and promoting it, okay? So you'll know. If, you know, follow me on LinkedIn, um, get in my Facebook, uh, Veterans Facebook group. Subscribe to the channel so you can get notified. Follow me on Eventbrite. It's going to be crazy, okay? We're going to be uh, marking it like crazy. So you can't say, where do I get the book? You know. All right, so Chris says, highly recommend. It is extremely informative. I was able to make headway with the VA. There you go. Thank you, Chris, for the support. And as always, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and don't forget to share this video with your fellow veterans. Thank you.